cart so that it promotes you to buy more as you're not wasting the space in the cart. Today we're exploring the cereal box aisle. Let's go! where they play calming music so that you aren't anxious when you're making purchases and it promotes you to stay in the store longer. Second and third shelves from the top have best sellers and leading brands in cereal and they're right in our eye line because the eye level is survival. Smaller brands and gourmet brands appear on the top shelf as they provide tone and texture to the shelf layout. Lower and bottom shelf is closer to kids' eye level and allows them to see and be able to touch and pick up the cereal boxes. Mascots help to promote sales of cereal because kids can identify the mascot with the cereal so it promotes brand loyalty, but also there's a psychology that if kids like the mascot, they're going to like the cereal as well. There has been a study done that children prefer mascots that look down at them with a 9.6 degree angle where adults prefer a logo that looks at them straight in the eye, like this one. Children prefer smaller boxes as they can hold them and pick them up, where adults prefer larger boxes as they're family size and they're getting more for their money. Red, blue, and yellow are all colors that raise your heart rate and as a result, they make you more hungry and promote you to buy more. The colors of the floor and Loblaws are also orange as it's another warm color that makes you hungry and promotes you to buy more. The sale color tags are red because they grab your attention and really make you see the sale and want to buy it. A research has been done to prove that children prefer cereal boxes that are 23 inches off the floor, where adults prefer cereal boxes that are 48 inches off the floor. Another tactic that supermarkets use is right to left pricing and this is when they put the more expensive products on the left and the least expensive products on the right. This is because our eyes are trained to look from right to left. So when we start looking we see the more expensive products on the right and on the left we see the least expensive products and this is because while we scan through we see more of the options and promotes more impulse buys. The consumption of corn and soy-based products has been affecting much more than our health. Highly processed derivatives such as HFCS, which stands for high fructose corn syrup, has been linked to obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. This type of derivative has been found more likely in children's cereals than adult cereals. On cereal boxes, they have more cereal than milk as it says a lot about our consumption patterns and our eating habits as we're eating more than we should, but it also helps to promote the brand of cereal. Cereal boxes are placed in a way where it looks like there's an abundance of cereals even if there aren't any behind it to show that you should buy more while they have them. Once we reach the end of the shopping trip, the manipulation does not end. Near the cash registers, they have more impulse buys so that you're spending more money. Once you get to the end of your shopping trip, they always have reward programs and points so that it promotes you to come back to their store and get their points so that you're going to get more rewards. I chose to do my supermarket reflection tour at the Loblaws on Carlton and Church because it's a supermarket that's located right downtown by Ryerson so I could do a little bit more research that's closer to home for me and right where a lot of my peers do their shopping. I chose to investigate the cereal box aisle as I think it has a lot of different techniques that buyers often surpass when they're in the grocery store. They don't think about all the different techniques that supermarkets use in order to get them to make impulse buys. What surprised me the most about reading the supermarket tour was really seeing all these different techniques. Um, of course I thought I was going to learn new things while reading this, but once I started reading it really opened my eyes to how many different techniques a store will use. They will even use ones that they're not even sure of. For example, 
Loblaws, they do the orange floors. They, they don't know if that's for sure gonna help promote sales or not, but they do it because warm colors are linked with hunger. So they think if the floors are orange, that there's a good chance that people are gonna make more impulse buys, but they don't have any proof that that works. Um, my initial opinions going into reading the text were that I wasn't gonna find as many as I did, but then again, once I went into the grocery store, I was completely surprised. I did not think that I would find all of those things to be true. Um, I agree with the information presented about my chosen aisle in the text because it really just made me open my eyes to all the different techniques that they do use. Um, this experience reinforces and challenges my existing ideas and assumptions about supermarkets as now I'm more aware of the different techniques they use and that a lot of the things I buy going into the store I don't necessarily need. There are a lot of impulse buys. Um, I learned about myself during this project because I realized that I fall for several of these techniques. For example, with the cart, I never feel fully satisfied if my cart's not full. I feel like I should buy more so that it's not empty. Also with the impulse buys at the cash register, I find that if I'm waiting in line for a long time, I'll grab a pack of gum or a chocolate bar or something that I don't need or never intended to buy but I get it anyways. Um, I think what surprised me the most was just how this affects our food system in general. I found that some of the cereal boxes don't use labeling techniques so you don't know what you're eating. For example, when I talked about the HFCS, high fructose corn syrup, a lot of Cereals with that are promoted towards children. They use high fructose corn syrup because it's more sugary and children like that, but it's not promoted anywhere on the box and those are linked to a lot of health issues. Another thing that I noticed is that you don't know if your cereal brand is using genetically modified organisms or not. So you really don't know what you're eating. Some companies promote it if they're using organic because that is something that does help to promote your product but other companies that do use GMOs sometimes don't promote it as they don't want people to know that that's what they're using but the companies that do have a lot of transparency and even though that they are using those GMOs people look at that company and think wow they're honest I'm gonna buy their product Another thing that I noticed was about our consumption patterns. We go into these stores, we see the cereal boxes with all the milk, with a little bit of milk and a lot of cereal and that promotes us to want to eat more and buy more and especially with the abundance of cereals we want to buy more of them. With all these impulse buys we are buying way more food that we don't need. We're going home with food that Maybe we bought on sale or thought we needed it last minute. But in the end, if you didn't go into the store looking for that product, chances are you didn't need it. And that's promoting, I mean, producing more waste in the world. And as there's more food waste, it's becoming harder and harder to find solutions to help fix this problem. In the future, with my shopping experiences, I think it is very important to stick to a list so that I am not getting any impulse buys and to really think twice before I pick something up that's not on the list and think about if I'm going to use this product or not. And so that's it. Thank you for listening.